I'm Keith Cambrin, and this is the class How the Internet Works. This is Hour 1, Section 4, Internet Names and Addressing. So, names and addressing are the province of the Internet Assigned Number Authority, IANA. Today we use a method of address assignment called Classless Interdomain Routing. When the internet uh, was uh, first uh, instantiated in the 80s, it used a form of addressing called uh, class assignment. So there were three classes of addresses, A, B, and C, um, and they were assigned on octet boundaries. So an A address meant that the upper octet identified the network or subnetwork, and then the lower three octets identified the host, which gave a large host range to class A addresses. Class B addresses had two octets that were fixed, and then it had uh, the two lower octets were available for address assignment. That was changed in the mid-90s to classless interdomain routing, and the boundaries were no longer on an octet basis, but rather a bit basis. So today, um, we use a nomenclature where we have an IP address, a slash, and then the mask. In this case, there's a 16-bit mask for this private network, which means that we have a, the upper 16 bits are fixed, and then the lower 16, if we subtract the subnet mask from 32, we find the host ID range of 16. There's a second private address range, and I've shown that here. It is a slash 8, which means the upper 8 bits are fixed, leaving 24 bits available if we subtract 8 from 32 for the host ID range. So uh, the 16 yields us about 65,000 host ID addresses, and then the 24 bits um, yields uh, uh, about 16 million addresses are available in this private address range. There's a final private address range shown here that's a slash 12. Now there are four general categories of addresses. Private networks are ones that are used in home networks or in enterprises for routing within the network, but they are not exposed or advertised on the public internet because those private addresses are replicated in many, many places and they are not distinct. So they, they cannot be advertised, uh, and that's why they're called private. The second category are assigned public addresses. So those are ones that have been assigned to uh, particular individuals or, or ISPs or enterprises. And those are assigned by regional internet registries. And regional internet registries get their pools uh, from IANA. The third category are reserved addresses and they are used for special purposes such as um, multicasting so they cannot be used in either a uh, in a private assignment or a public assignment the fourth category are the unassigned addresses and those are in pools that are managed by the regional internet registries in the example i've shown my home subnet I'm using the 192.168.1 address space. I've assigned a subnet mask of 24, which means the upper 24 bits uh, do not change within my network. That leaves me 8 bits available for assignment to host. The uh, address range for my host, therefore, is from 1 to 254. 0 cannot be assigned. That's a special address. Uh, nor can 255 be assigned, it's, it's reserved. My internet service provider is Verizon, and uh, I'll show you in a bit how I discovered their IP address. Uh, this is uh, their address and their address range. The range can be discovered by taking an IP address within the network 
and going to whois.aaron.net and you will find what the range of that uh, the subnet mask for that network. I did the same thing for Google and I'll show you in a bit how I discovered Google and it's a slash 16 network which means they have uh, a host ID range of 16 bits so with this IP address and Google has others but with this IP address uh, Google has uh, available uh, 65,000 hosts that they could populate or at least addresses within this space. So uh, we talked about in previous sessions the protocol stack and in addressing we'll start with the URL. Now the URL is a uniform resource locator and it's broken into several parts if we start here, uh, this is the service, HTTP, that doesn't identify the IP address, but it does tell us the port number we're going to use and uh, the service uh, that will be used over um, the Internet. Uh, HTTP has a TCP port of 80 as the well-known port or the default. The top level domain is com, so that's commercial. We're in the Google domain in a subdomain of maps within Google. And then there is a um, directory or destination of slash maps that Google has set aside for this uh, uh, particular application. Some tools we'll look at along the way are IP config, which is a Windows tool. There's a comparable tool in Linux called IF uh, config, but we'll also use the ping tool to learn about where this URL goes and, and how we can access it. As we walk down the protocol stack, we'll use ping to discover the IP address of google.com slash maps and then we use a tool called Netstat to discover our uh, own address in port. I'm using a, a Samsung tablet for uh, this work today. And the destination uh, address in port will be displayed in Netstat as well. As we move further down the protocol stack, um, we're going to find that the IP address of the tablet is not the address that is seen by Google because we're going to go through a gateway. So we'll need to discover the IP address of the gateway on the WAN side that is on outside the local area network and on the wide area network. And of course it will terminate to the same uh, address for Google. Finally, we're going to find the link layer addresses for Ethernet, those are called media access control addresses, MAC addresses, and we're going to use a tool called ARP to discover those. Now I'm going to leave this slide and uh, the slide deck in general and bring up two windows and we'll use these tools to discover uh, these addresses. Here are two windows in the view. Uh, the upper window is a Chrome browser where I've already preloaded our URL, maps.google.com. A couple of words about URLs, and I won't go into them in a lot of detail because there is actually a fair amount to learn. But uh, one, of course, is that URLs are case insensitive. It didn't matter whether I type this out in uppercase or lowercase, it's going to go to the same destination. Uh, secondly, browsers uh, behave a little differently in the address space. Uh, here I've typed in HTTP colon slash slash and then this URL. Uh, Google is not displaying, the Chrome browser is not displaying uh, the HTTP uh, part of the address I typed in because that's the service and we're really strictly looking at the URL here. I use slash maps in the example. 
um, but either URL with or without the slash maps takes you to the same place. In the lower window I've got a DOS window and I'm going to go through some commands in it and I've done two things which I tend to do on all my Windows machines is one I've loaded some Linux like commands uh, CYG win is the uh, set of utilities I use and they're a really nice set of utilities they give you Unix or Linux like capabilities uh, on a Windows machine so uh, we'll look at some of the command lines for those the first thing uh, we want to do is uh, really find where the IP address for maps.google.com so we we'll use the ping facility for that that's actually a Windows utility uh, the same or a similar utility is available uh, un under Linux and if we ping Google and I did it here to restrict the count to one because I didn't want a whole list here of uh, various tests uh, we find that the IP address for google.com uh, under maps is this address here 74.125.227.4 and is an other piece of information only takes 43 milliseconds to get there and back and so now we have the IP address of Google and we can explore a little more um, and, and learn learn some more about where where we're going that's the first piece of our puzzle so next we use a utility called netstat and netstat has both a Windows and a Linux version the command lines are slightly different so you need to look at the manual pages or, or use the help facility to uh, figure out what you want to use um, I'm going to get a display that's in a numeric format and I'm going to pipe it through grep which is a filter uh, because there's a lot of, of um, other entries that we're not interested in today and look for my private address 192.168 interestingly when I try to use it I find there's no information which means there's no there are no connections set up to Google Maps and that's because I set this up earlier and those TCP connections have expired rather than leave them up the browser takes those down after they uh, aren't used for a certain period of time so what we'll do is we'll um, go in and do a reload of that web page to Maps Google and we'll come down here and execute our netstat command again and what we find out that when we reloaded that page we got a lot of connection um, this I'm going to put this on edit mark so we can see so this is our source address here and you notice the port numbers all the different ports that are being used from the tablet the Samsung tag tablet I'm using to the de different destinations um, at uh, Google and the uh, really the, the Google HTML and uh, PHP or whatever JavaScript whatever they're using has caused us to set up a lot of connections to the 227.9 site to port 80 but it's also set up connections to other um, host IDs 143 15 and 2 and these are all TCP connections established the source ports are assigned uh, more or less in a systematic way from a range that's specified in the protocol so well-known ports below 2000 for example would not be used as source ports uh, rather these TCP ports are used in a much higher range um, so we don't have conflicts so this tells us now we've got a lot of uh, TCP connections set up from our uh, host machine that's the Samsung tablet uh, to the um, Google destination but we're routing really from the tablet to the gateway to my gateway and the gateway uh, in turn 
access the wide area network. So there are two IP connections, one to the gateway, and then we go through a separate connection on the wide area network to Google. Um, and we'll talk more about uh, something called NATing later, which will show us how we do that and why we do that. To look at the MAC addresses, we'll use the ARP command uh, with a minus A for all, but again, I pipe it through a grep, which is a filter of 192.168. That means just show me uh, lines in the results that have that um, string in them. And what we see is there are four MAC addresses, um, and the ARP table is really a table it's that state information that's maintained by uh, the IP and link layer to be able to translate from destinations that have an IP address to destinations that have a MAC address. All the routing in my local area network to any destination in my local area network has to be done at the link layer over a physical facility. And so this is my gateway um, that you see here the 6AC3, the MAC addresses are unique and they are built into the machine or actually the interface, I should say, when the interface is uh, manufactured. So uh, that is a unique address that applies only to this interface on, on my machine. So that's the gateway. Uh, these are other machines that happen to be in my network 78 and 100. These are dynamic IP addresses, and we'll talk more about that later. So now we have discovered our destination address, the address of our gateway, um, and our originating port and our terminating port. In the next session, we're going to talk about NATS, uh, Network Address Translation, and uh, continue this discussion and look at how addresses are uh, distributed, both how they're assigned to this tablet through a process called DHCP and how they're assigned to host sites and how we learn about those IP addresses from the URLs and that's called the domain name system. So those are two topics for next time.